Daniel, you're gonna be late for school again. Mom, Mom I'm right behind you, okay? They said if you were late one more time, you're out. I know. Miss Ellen Lowell? Step out of the car, please, ma'am. FBI, I'm Special Agent Felton, that's Agent Brenteau. Is this your son, Daniel Lowell? Yes. Your son is under arrest, ma'am. Really? Wait, wait a minute, what's he under arrest for? Violation of the Child Pornography Protection Act. What child pornography? No, there, there must be some kind of a mistake. Do you know anything about this? It's just a joke, Mom. A joke? This doesn't look like a joke. Search for the virtual child pornography case. We have Mrs. Seidel, meaning, of course, I can't discuss it. Naturally. Oh, by the way, my compliments, sir. Your arguments before us opposing Megan's law were very persuasive. Well, obviously not persuasive enough. <laughs> you can't win them all, Counselor. Uh, Justice Chandler, in particular, had a little trouble seeing my point of view. Well, you're being kind, sir. Brian Chandler is unable to see beyond his bag of jelly beans. <laughs> Actually, Justice Hoskins was unable to grasp my arguments, too. <laughs> Don't get me started on Henry Hoskins. The only thing worse than pretending to be a coarse, bumbling country lawyer is actually being a coarse, bumbling country lawyer. <laughs> no, no. Gentlemen, while I have the utmost respect for my brethren, I have found them all to be far from perfect. <laughs> Someone give me a name. Bancroft. Yes, the ultimate pedant who takes refuge in his ivory tower of legal nitpickery to avoid real-life issues. <laughs> Morris! A pseudo-intellectual who clings to his common man of the people image. One day I caught him reading the education of Henry Adams, which I suppose means that we should call Justice Morris a faux pseudo-intellectual. <laughs> Weisenberg! Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. An ideological pit bull if ever there was one, but at least I can count on Esther as an ally. The <laughs> Valley! <laughs> Ah, yes, Justice Novelli. What was it Gertrude Stein said about Oakland, California? She said, there is no there, there. I believe that aptly describes our junior child. <laughs> so give us your honest thoughts on the case before the court tomorrow. The well, truth. Well, as long as I don't become addicted to jelly beans, maybe I'll find out. <laughs> As I was saying, it was section six. Weekend? No, no. Why? There's an office pool. I'm in on it. You're kidding. Jerry, you're a hot topic, man. Inquiring minds want to know. Inquiring minds can mind their own business. <laughs> <laughs> able to see my Morning. Morning. Is she mad at you about something? Probably. What are you listening to? You guys are not going to believe this. Don't get me started on Henry Hoskins. The only thing worse than pretending to be a 
Oh. That voice sounds familiar. It took me a minute. Listen. Being, of course, <laughs> oh, no. Gentlemen, while I have the utmost respect for my brethren, I have found them all. That's Justice Snow. Somebody recorded a Supreme Court justice at a cocktail party? Did he know he was being recorded? I don't think so. Listen to what he says about the boss. Ah, yes, Justice Novelli. What was it Gertrude Stein said about Oakland, California? She said, there is no there there. I believe that aptly describes our junior. <laughs> Good morning. Let's get started on United States v. Lowell. Why do you look like deer caught in headlights? We were just listening to a tape, sir. That mysteriously appeared on my desk this morning. Which you should probably listen to, Mr. Justice. Tape of what? Justice Snow. At a cocktail party. Talking about the court, he says some interesting things about the brethren, sir. I have no desire to eavesdrop on Justice Snow, especially when he's had one martini too many. U.S. v. Lowell. Sounded like more than one martini to me. The Child Pornography Protection Act of 1996, CPPA. Ellie, is it constitutional? I'm with the Ninth Circuit Court on this one, sir. It is not. Miguel. It is. Jerry? It's not unconstitutional. Okay, a 17-year-old computer geek should not face 15 years in prison for morphing his classmates' faces onto the actors' bodies in a porn movie. First of all, the district court gave him two years probation. It was a prank. You might feel differently if it was your face. Or your body. Dream on. Point is, visual depictions of children and sexually explicit conduct is illegal. Thank you. I read New York versus Ferber, which, by the way, bans child porn because real children were harmed in making it. If real children aren't involved, Ferber doesn't apply. That's why Congress wrote the CPPA. Which fails on the First Amendment right to free speech. But the idea is simulated child porn also hurts kids. A sexual predator might use it to entice children, real children, into sex acts. Okay, according to that theory, all sexually explicit material could be banned based on harmful effects. We're not talking about free speech, Ellie. It's about protecting kids. Actually, it's about both. We have to find a way to protect kids and free speech. We should be able to do that. Don't you agree? Justice Hoskins, sir. Henry! You know what this is, Henry? It is a unanimous opinion from the United States Supreme Court. Unanimous. Don't you love the sound of that word? I don't get to hear it much anymore. Well, it sends a strong message when the highest court in the land speaks with one voice, as it did in New York v. Ferber. And as we won't in U.S. v. Lowell. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, I'm thinking that with free speech at risk, some of the brethren might be a tad jittery about the Child Pornography Protection Act. It is fairly inclusive, Chief. Well, so we throw out some of the uh, borderline material, like this Lowell stuff, to protect our kids. Uh, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Neither will I. I want a six to three vote, Henry. Now, let me talk to Jerome and Teddy, see what we can work out. And speaking of Teddy, have you uh, heard the tape yet? Tape? W w what tape? <laughs> Oh, you'll find out soon enough. <laughs> ah, pseudo intellectual who clings to his common man in the people image. One day, I caught him reading the education of Henry Adams, so I suppose we would have to call Justice Morris a foe of pseudo intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> Weisenberg. An ideological pit bull, if ever there was one, but at least I can count on Esther as an ally. <laughs> Chad Davidson is. Well, you'll meet him. He's really cool. Plus, it's only a movie. It's a date. First date. I know. So, so, well, you have to toss it over with your dad. Mom. What? You don't think I'd make a momentous decision like this by myself, do you? You know what dad'll do? He'll stall. Then he'll look at it from every side. Then he'll think about it. And then he'll change his mind. And when he decides it's okay, Chad will have gone and married Karina Williams. Well, I wouldn't be so sure. He might just say no right away. Mom, that's not even funny. Is he cute? He's Justin Timberlake cute. Who? He's cute, Mom. <laughs>
At issue is the Child Pornography Protection Act of 1996 and the case of the United States versus Danny Lowell. Our guests are Larry Flint, First Amendment advocate, and Bill O'Reilly, host of The O'Reilly Factor. Mr. Flint, everybody wants to protect kids, but how do you do it in this context? Well, the crime is the use of the child, uh, violating the rights of someone who's not old enough to speak for themselves, and they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Mr. O'Reilly, should it make any difference if it's, a, if it's a real child or a virtual child? Of course it makes a difference. This is insane. Asking Larry Flint if something's a scene is like asking a shark if he wants breakfast. To have, in this case, children being put in pornographic positions on the internet by some other kid, 17-year-old, whatever. That's a criminal act. That's pornographic terrorism. It's not protected speech. By any measure, if you put a minor in a pornographic situation, whether it's real or virtual, you should go to jail. The crime is violating the rights of that child. It's not a question of what photographs might exist as a result of it. If the Supreme Court of the United States cannot protect the children of America, then we don't need the Supreme Court. Just because uh, the government may find speech offensive, don't give them the right to suppress it. And parody now has become protected speech. And Bill O'Reilly and the rest of the world have to accept that. That's wrong. Parody is not protected speech when it crosses the pornographic line dealing with minors. The abuse of children. I agree with that, Bill, but the one bill... Thank you, Larry. Before we wrap up tonight's edition of Curveball, there's some news for you, court watchers. Unconfirmed reports indicate Justice Theodore Snow made some, I would say, inappropriate remarks in public. Snow referred to Justice Chandler as that jelly bean jurist and called the court the Novelli Court due to Joseph Novelli's persistent controlling vote. Wonder what Chief Justice Franken thinks about that. We'll keep our eye on that story. Meanwhile, that's it for Curveball. I'm Charles Beerbauer. Thanks for joining us. Where's the tape? It's around, sir. Would you like me to get it for you? Please. Yes, sir, Mr. Justice. But, Dad, that's not fair. I just want to meet him. You want to inspect him. Beth, listen to what your father has to say. My friends are going to think I'm some kind of loser. Honey, you're only 15. I'm going on 16. And the boy's two years older with a car. I think it's more than fair that we meet him before we agree to the date. Chad Davidson asked you out? Yes, he did. Uh-oh, robbing the cradle. Shut up. Do you know him? Yeah, Davidson's OK. Must be pretty hard up, though. You know, this is why I didn't want to discuss this, OK? I knew you were going to react this way. It's a, it's a sensitive issue, huh? Go get ready for school. Can I eat first? No, take it with you. Am I being unreasonable? No, uh, you're being reasonable, only... Uh, only what? Well, apparently the boy is very popular, and yes, he's older. He's asked her out, and she's thrilled. It's just a movie. She knew I'd react which way. She said you'd stall. Stall? Did she also say I would be um, uncertain, indecisive, unable to make up my mind, and afraid to take a stand? No, but I bet that's what Ted Snow said. And more. He said they might as well call it Novelli's Court. Oh, I like that. No, you don't. And neither will the chief. According to Teddy Snow, I control the court. Because having no strong convictions, I can let myself be swayed. Well, that's absurd. I, that's wrong. <laughs> Teddy Snow was anything other than a justice of the Supreme Court, I'd say he's foot. OK, thanks for the support. It's her first date. I know. <laughs> Tell her she can go. Yes! <laughs> You and uh, Kayla going out this weekend? You in the pool too? No, never. Seeking inside information. Very unethical, Julian. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. Uh, what's this? It's an invitation. The Hamiltonian Society? You've got to be kidding me, Julian. Do I look like some sort of elitist conservative? I don't know. What does an elitist conservative look like? Thanks, but no thanks. 
The Hamiltonian Society is not ideological. It's about talent, jumpstarting your career in the real world. It's not for everyone. It's for serious people. And uh, frankly, Jerry, and I could be wrong, but I think this is for you. Bring a date. I am going to find the bureaucratic little dork who did this, and I am going to stuff a CD-ROM so far down his throat. Problems? Yeah. Remember that filtering software they put in last year? Mm -hmm. Well, it won't allow me to access a safe sex site. Watch and learn. Remind me again, Mr. Science, what was this um, filtering software supposed to accomplish? To block websites like Madame La Femme Will Teach You To Behave <laughs> dot com. <laughs> there, you are now unblocked. But if I do want to block Madame La Femme, I also have to block Safe Sex? Until someone improves the software, that's the deal. Wow, that seems a little over inclusive, wouldn't you say? Maybe. Wait a minute. Just like the CPPA. It's not the same thing. It is the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. The CPPA is supposed to protect kids, right? Well, it catches Danny Lowell, just like this filtering software catches innocent websites. I'm never going to help you with your computer again. I could probably live with that. I'm surprised at you, Esther. You must recognize the clear and present danger in child pornography in any form. What I recognize is another step on that slippery slope of let's disregard the Bill of Rights whenever it becomes inconvenient. No, I intend to fight for every comma and every period in the First Amendment. And if that makes me an ideological pit bull, <laughs> so be it. Actually, Esther, I think Ted meant that as a compliment. Now, if someone could just explain to me what a faux pseudo-intellectual is. Oh, good morning, Mr. Chief Justice of the Novelli Court. Please. <laughs> You're not taking this seriously, are you, Joe? No, I'm not. Coffee, Joe? No, I think tea. No, coffee. I don't know. I can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy doesn't mean any harm. He shoots off his mouth. He's just letting off a little steam, something we could all use from time to time. Does anyone know what the um, Chief Justice of the Branken Court feels about it? Well, it's no big deal. I don't think the Chief Justice will let something like this upset him. I don't think you should either, Joe. Esther, I'm not upset. Good. Good morning, all. Good morning, Teddy. I am starving. Teddy is like a New York cab driver. He causes accidents all around him, and then he just goes on his merry way and uh, without a scratch. Some say New York cabbies are the best drivers in the world. <clears throat> well, see you in court. I've got work to do. See you later. Ellie, what do you think about the Hamiltonian Society? I try not to think about it at all. Why? Julian laid this on me this morning. Oh, you're not thinking of going, are you? I don't know. Jerry, you can't. Hey, what is this, prior restraint? He's a big boy. Oh, shut up, Miguel. We all know you're a charter member. Me? Yeah, you're everything they're looking for. You're smug, self-centered, conservative to a fault, closed-minded, ruthless. You flatter me, but you happen to be wrong. You don't belong? I wouldn't belong to any club that serves Sherry at its get-togethers. So you've been to their meeting? Yes, I've been to one. But unlike some closed-minded people, I believe in experiencing something before rejecting it. I suppose it's flattering just to be invited. What did Julian tell you? That only the best and the brightest are invited? Hey, no offense, pal, but he's got a quota to fill. Either he brings a prospective new member to a meeting, or he pays a fine. What do you think, Jerry? Is he telling the truth? Hmm? Or is he really a member and just afraid to admit it? So I'm a coarse, bumbling country lawyer, am I? Don't start it on me, Henry. Deborah's already raked me over the coals this morning. <laughs> I applaud her for it. Just so you know, I never meant to offend Oh, no you. need to apologize, Teddy. I worked hard on my image. Good to know it wasn't for nothing. Ted, <laughs> brought you your own jelly beans. Now, you won't be complaining when I don't share with you in conference. Awfully sorry I've been boring you all this time, Teddy, with my legal nitpicking. Interesting word, that. Nitpicking. 
Now, it refers, I believe, to head lice. An unpleasant job, but necessary. Yes, yes, heap it on me, I deserve it. Excuse me, Ted, I had trouble trying to decide which color robe to wear today, black or black. What do you think? You picked one hell of a time to shoot your mouth off, Ted. Chief, you violated protocol. I know. I want to focus court. In fact, I insist on it. I will not tolerate bickering and petty animosities. I apologize for my lack of discretion. It won't happen again. Well, any damage that's done is done. But I want no more of it, and I want you to well, patch things up with Novelli. Today. I will, Chief. I'm sorry. Well, you better be. Because contrary to what may be going around, this is still Branken's court. United States versus Daniel Lowell. Mr. Halliday. Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court. In 1996, Congress updated the child pornography laws to keep pace with technological development. Specifically defined computer generated images of children engaged in sex acts as unprotected speech consistent with what this court did in New York versus Ferber. We've all studied the briefs, Mr. Hallett, and let's get to the point. Is the CPPA constitutional? It is, Justice Weisenberg, because Congress has the right, to, indeed the duty, to keep up with technology, and that is what the CPPA does. It addresses the fact that there's something new in the world today called virtual images. Virtual, because no actual children are used. Uh, yes, Justice Snow, no real minors were involved in making it. So, no children were forced to engage in sexual acts? No, ma'am, but uh, children can then be exposed to these images which appear to be real. That's a common tactic used by sexual predators. So you'd have us create another category of prohibited speech because someone might get hurt by it? Well, not just someone, Mr. Justice, our children. See, virtual child pornography has the same risk of seducing children into sexual activity as traditional child pornography. And it also offers the same inducement to sexual predators to go out and find a child with whom to carry out these twisted fantasies. We must ensure the innocence and the safety of our children. I hate to burst your bubble, Clyde, but he invited everyone except Ellie. Oh. So you going? Uh-huh. Got other plans. Like a date? Yeah. Relax, cowboy. It's with a girlfriend. We're gonna see Monster's Ball. You wanna go? You mean the one with the, uh... Steamiest sex scene since Color of Night? <sighs> no, I promised you. But, uh, maybe we can meet up afterwards? Sure. We agree that Congress has the duty to write laws, but it also has the duty to write them well, and consistently with the Constitution. Now, the business of child pornography in any form is a scourge that cannot be tolerated. But Danny Lowell's no pornographer, nor is he a panderer. Why, Miss Clark? Because he wasn't selling copies of his X-rated video? Exactly, Mr. Chief Justice. He never intended to profit from his material, nor did he intend for it to be used to entice children into sexual acts. He put it on the internet, didn't he? That's distribution. Would it change anything if he charged for it? Under Ferber, it would, Justice Chandler, because Ferber recognizes that pornography is made for profit and plays no legitimate role in the free exchange of ideas. But the CPPA makes no such distinction. Correct, Justice Hoskins, which is one reason the CPPA is unconstitutional. Danny Lowell wanted to make fun of his classmates. Exercising his right of free speech, he tried to make a joke. Granted, it was a bad joke. It was defamation. For which his family was sued and settled. Danny made a mistake, and he's paying the price. 
This conviction is on his record. It's going to affect his getting into college, getting a decent job. You're not trying to say that he's been punished enough, are you? No, Mr. Chief Justice. I'm saying he should never have been punished in the first place. We assert that his action wasn't remotely the crime Congress had in mind when it wrote this law. Even if the government was wrong to apply the law in this case, that does not make the law unconstitutional. Uh, with all due respect, Mr. Chief Justice, this is a poorly drafted law that sweeps broadly into protected speech. It's a bad law, and it was badly applied in this case, as it will be in future cases if the court upholds it. The right of free speech is also the right to make a mistake. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Your time is up. The case is submitted. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. This court sure enough, the court. We've Joe. lost our expression on the Yeah, issue. they're we'll talk later. Excuse me, Joe. Thanks for the help in there. You hardly needed my help, Esther. Oh, Joseph, don't be coy. You make a great team when we're on the same side. I was just concerned that what Teddy said might influence you. Oh. Oh, by turning you against opposition. Esther, do you really think personal feelings would swing my vote one way or another? Well, no, of course not. That's not what I meant. But that's what you implied. Well, I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression, Joe. I, I was just excited. I was. I liked the questions you asked. Uh, look, it was meant as a compliment. I'm glad you're voting with us. You're making an assumption, Esther. The truth is... I know, I know. You haven't made your mind up yet. <sighs> I've offended you again. No. Thanks for the kind words. Mr. Novelli? It must be Chad. It's very nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Well, come on in. Beth will be down in a minute. Oh, no, I think he's talking to Dad. Oh, honey, relax. Dad's not going to eat him. Do you think Dad'll like him? Give him some time. If you like him, your dad'll like him. <laughs> Let me look at you. Well, we talked about three strikes at school, and everybody agreed that it was wrong to put people away forever just for stealing a car or something. Well, when we talked at court, we agreed that the California three strikes law is constitutional. I voted with the majority. Oh, well... However, if you'd have been in conference, I might have voted differently. Hello. Hi. Hi. You look great. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Sarah, Beth's mom. I'm Chad. Um, well, I guess we'd better go. No, we don't want to be late. That's right. You look beautiful, sweetheart. Thanks, Daddy. Good night, Mrs. Novelli. Uh, we'll be back by 10. That'll be fine. Have a good time. Okay. Bye. Well, not too good. He seems nice. Yeah, he reminds me of someone. Anyone I know? Yeah, me. Back when I knew all the answers. Uh, you want some wine? Sure. I forgot her keys. Sorry to badge in on you like this. No problem. Uh, may I offer you something to drink? Oh, no, I'm fine. Thanks, Sarah. Well, you'll excuse me. Ted, please, come in. Wow. What a place you have here. Thank you. I'm uh, a man who speaks his mind, Joe. No question about that. <laughs> and uh, I apologize for any distress I may have caused you. I decided a long time ago that I didn't want to know what people really think of me. Maybe that's the reason why I'm here. You don't know what I really think of you. Like I said. I'm disappointed you haven't given us the liberal majority we need to roll back some of the hardline rulings of the Branken court. I'm sorry to have disappointed you. But you don't seem to be committed to liberal principles, or conservative ones, for that matter. Principles can be a handy excuse for abandoning reason and thought. For some people, yes. 
But by being indecisive, you put yourself in the spotlight. I beg your pardon? Why are you the swing vote so often? Because I try to see both sides of the question equally. Maybe by not taking a clear position, you focus all the attention on yourself? This is truly a novel theory, Ted. I have to admit I hadn't thought of it before. I take my time deciding because I like being the star attraction. Don't be so quick to dismiss it, Joe. I was where you are once. Any new justice is in the spotlight. And we're all human. We relish it. Do you relish attention, Ted? <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting invited to the White House for dinner. Or even Branken's house, for that matter. Is that why you resent me? Because I had dinner at the Chief's house? Look, Joe, I like you. That's nice to hear, Ted. But you're unpredictable. And that makes you powerful. I don't seek power. No. But it finds you. Thank you, Ted, for clarifying your position. I hope uh, there are no hard feelings. Let me ask you something. If you had known you were being recorded, would it have made any difference? None at all. I didn't think so. Good night, Joe. Good night, Ted. Why, did you already see it? No. So? It's rated R, and I'm only 16. They never check. Come on. Don't tell me you never go to R-rated movies, Ben. Of course I do. We can go somewhere else if you want. Nah, it's OK. Are you sure? Yeah, just buy the tickets, Chad. Yeah. Two adult, please. It's time you forgave yourself. Vicky. What? You know that forgiving yourself is the one thing a person. What if Ted's right? He's not. But what if he is? Hey, you're a justice of the United States Supreme Court. Exactly. I can't deny it's Alex. intoxicating, it's seductive. But what if I do put myself in the middle? Not because of principles, but because it makes me feel powerful. You put yourself in the middle because you're a conscientious, thoughtful man. <laughs> you're so thoughtful, you can't decide if you're thoughtful or power hungry. <laughs> You go with your principles. They look good on you. That sex scene bother you? No. Oh, you closed your eyes a lot. You're watching me? <laughs> I don't think so. I glanced once. <laughs> I really had fun. Yeah, me too. Thanks. You think we could do it again next Saturday night? Yeah, sure. I mean, I have to check with the parents, make sure the family's not doing anything. Your parents are really cool. Thanks. Yeah, are you gonna tell them what movie we saw? They ask. Well, you could say we saw Monsters, Inc. <laughs> I don't lie to my parents, Chad. It, it's okay, though. They don't see very many movies since my dad's on the court. Well, I might run it on DVD someday. Oh, but then I'll be 17, and it won't matter. No, I really had fun. Yeah, I'll bet you did. <laughs> Not just the movie. I had fun with you. Me too. I should go inside. 
say. Why? Because my dad's probably watching from the front window. Shh. Um. Mm. You're on time. It's worth the point. What are you doing? Saying what's going on. Joe, you're spying on her. Get away from here. Hey. How was it? Good. It was fun. Did he put the moves on you? Get a life. What'd you do? Well, we went to the movie, and we had some pizza, and then we came home. Do you like him? Well, it was one date. It wasn't that big a deal. What movie did you see? Monsters Ball. Was it good? Yeah. So, um, Chad asked me out for next Saturday night. What did you say? I said I'd check with you first. briefs, Ninth Circuit ruling, parties briefs. You've got our final memo already. That's everything from us, sir. I have Ellie's memo. I guess that's it. I left my memo on your desk, Mr. Justice. Yes, thank you, Ellie. I have it. But I didn't think it was compelling enough, so I found more arguments. If Danny Lowell's video is child pornography, then so are these. Hoping we left our tender sensibilities at the door, let's take a look at Danny Lowell's video. Well, at least it's badly made. <laughs> Art, it's not, but can we really call it child pornography? Does it smell like a duck? Oh, it smells worse than a duck. Shall we take a vote? I vote that the Ninth Circuit is reversed, the law is upheld, Danny Lowell's conviction under the CPPA is affirmed. I agree. It's child porn. I disagree. Affirm the Ninth Circuit, overturn the conviction, strike down the CPPA. Brian? I'm voting with you, Chief. Uphold the conviction and the law. Jerome? Overturn the conviction, strike down the CPPA. I agree with Jerome. I say the conviction stands, and so does the law. Overturn. I don't know. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah. I think we should let Joe tell us what he doesn't know, Esther. What we just saw is reprehensible and obscene. No question. But should it be banned as child pornography? If we say yes and allow the CPPA to place it outside the protection of the First Amendment, what does that mean for serious works involving childhood sexuality? Natural Eroticism, a book of photographs by Dino Antonini. Many people consider it art. Prints by artist Jim Newton. Textbook on sex education. And then there are the movies. Friday the 13th. Taxi Driver. Romeo and Juliet. The Tin Drum. Risky Business. And this one, Lolita. A film they were afraid to release in this country because of the CPPA. The film editor had a lawyer with him in the editing room. I think you made your point, Joe. You're right, Chief. You need a bigger fire anyway. Big enough to consume all the works of literary, artistic, political, and scientific value that might be illegal under the CPPA. And your vote is? I want to overturn Danny Lowell's conviction, but I will not vote to uphold the right to publish child pornography. The problem is Congress didn't do its job. I say we overturn the conviction on narrow grounds and trust 
Congress gets the message and rewrites the CPPA. Okay, let's try the vote again, see where we are. Danny Lowell's conviction under the CPPA. Was it constitutional under the First Amendment? Is the CPPA itself constitutional? Those are the questions before us, brethren. It was the right vote on this one, Deborah. Hope so. Well, you wanted a strong vote, and you got it. Seven to two, Henry, the wrong way. Well, what are you going to do? The man was right. I respectfully disagree, and I'll write the dissent myself. And it'll be a beauty, I can tell. It's an awesome power, isn't it? Tell the United States Congress what to do. If a worker doesn't like the conditions, he or she is free to seek employment elsewhere. Low wages, long hours, unsafe work conditions, these things don't bother you? They bother me a great deal, Miss Pearson. Mr. Snyder, nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Nice to see you, Jonathan. It's Julian. Girls trapped in a sweatshop, dying in raging fires. I believe she's referring to the Great Triangle Shirtwaist Fire 90 years ago. A tragedy, of course, but... Then how can you oppose national standards for workplace safety? I read your article on judicial restraint in the new millennium, sir. Very inspiring. Very because the standards are ridiculous and restrictive. They'll bankrupt American business. Sir, what's ridiculous about fair wages and decent hours? Nothing, Mr. Klein, but come on. Humidity control, ergonomic chairs. Both of which have proven to maximize productivity. Ramps, complex air filtration. Workers don't have the right to breathe. Did you bring these people here, Jonathan? It's Julian, sir. Yes, sir, I did, and I'm sorry. Don't be. When you're done clerking for Justice Novelli, give me a call. We can use spirited, bright young attorneys who aren't afraid to speak their minds at our firm. Sherry, Jonathan? There you go. You wanted to see me, Chief? Ah, Ted. Thanks for stopping by. Scott? Another time. You know, I've always thought a difference of opinion was a good thing on the bench, wouldn't you say, Ted? Absolutely, Chief. And uh, I also believe in leaving our differences at the door when we walk out of here. As do I. And I. So when there's a clash of personalities, I like to think that my colleagues can sort them out for themselves. I don't like to interfere, do I, Henry? You do not, Chief. Have you two worked things out between you? I think so. No problem here, Chief. Good, because Arlene is organizing a little dinner party and we'd like you to attend, Ted, and you and Sarah. Uh, thank you. I'd like that. It'll be a pleasure. I don't think we've ever had you over before, have we, Ted? Actually, no. Well, it's long overdue. Arlene will call you with the details. Look forward to it. See you tomorrow. Oh, Ted. You know, I can't imagine who made that tape recording or what their motive was in distributing it. But I trust it'll be a one-of-a-kind event. I'm sure it will be, Chief. Those two will never be friends. No, I don't suppose they will. You don't seem to be too upset by that. Oh, Henry, one man's animosity is another man's leverage. <laughs>